Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel, Home with Kimberly. I am so glad to be filming for you guys again. Um, been a lot of transition over this past year. I've made a cross country move. I am now back in Indiana, close to family. So everybody's getting settled in and I am ready to get back in the groove of filming for you guys. So I'm gonna start this video out with a couple of grocery hauls. I've got a Walmart haul I'm gonna go through with you and then an Aldi's haul um, and we will go from there. Okay, so first we will start off with eggs. I did get two dozen eggs, uh, one block of Philadelphia cream cheese. I need this for a Thanksgiving meal I'm going to be making. Another Thanksgiving meal I'm making for my son. He was sick over Thanksgiving, didn't get to enjoy anything, so those are going to go in the mashed potatoes. Um, I needed to get some more Parmesan cheese. My daughter loves these Bob Evans mac and cheese. I haven't gotten these in a while, so I got those for her. And we also picked up some Sunny D and some whole milk. I was out of my creamer, so I did get the Cold Stone Sweet Cream. I believe I'm out of panko breadcrumbs. I am making a baked macaroni and cheese to go with our Thanksgiving dinner for tomorrow, so I needed those. Um, as well as some more heavy whipping cream that I need for the dinner. Butter, I'm getting low. Two blocks of sharp cheddar cheese, that's gonna be for the mac and cheese. These I just picked, well, I picked these up because I think I'm about out of active dry yeast and I know I'm out of fast rising yeast. I actually do a lot of sourdough uh, bread recipes now and will definitely be featuring that more on the channel, but um, I do have some upcoming recipes that I need just regular yeast for, so I picked up a couple of packets each of those. And then I think I'm getting low on my garlic powder, so I got another one of those. Um, grape jelly, I've got to keep that on hand constantly. My son loves peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, so we go through that very quickly. Um, organic, all-purpose, unbleached flour. I always make sure it's unbleached and preferably do want organic, especially when working with my sourdough. I did get this big pack of chicken drumsticks. Not sure yet what I'm going to do with that, but I will definitely make use of that as well as some chicken breasts because I'm completely out of chicken. I did get two packs of the grass-fed ground beef, um, the 80-20, and as well as, the, oh, I didn't even realize that was the maple syrup one. That's fine. I thought it was the original, but that's fine. So maple syrup, sausage links, and then I did get a pack of Jimmy Dean, just regular pork sausage, as well as this beautiful butternut squash because I'm going to be making a um, pasta recipe actually that I believe both of these are going to be in that recipe so I'm looking forward to that. I am also going to be making a broccoli cheddar cheese soup I think I want to do I found a recipe for um, copycat Panera. I don't know why they only gave me one <laughs> broccoli crown but they did um, and then I got the shredded carrots to go on that. I got myself some more green onions I know I'm going to need those. Um, uh, when I make well, there's probably a couple different pasta things, pasta dishes I'll be making in the near future. But for one of those pasta dishes, I want some bread on the side. And I have been dying to do a twist bread. It's like a pesto twist bread. And I am so happy I found the traditional basil pesto and then this tomato pesto. So that's going to be so pretty. It's going to be Christmassy, the green and the red twist bread. I'll definitely bring you along when I do that recipe. Um, I got three of the Prego three cheese spaghetti sauces because again, my son loves spaghetti. Uh, another pack of onions, I'm getting low, as well as potatoes. Four of the just regular white top bread because again, my son has peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and I'm trying to get him to eat my homemade bread, but he just prefers the traditional uh, white. I got some more tortillas in case, um, I don't know, if I wanna make some uh, tacos or enchiladas or whatever just to have on hand. I like having those to be able to do what I want to do with those. I got a two pack of the stove top turkey stove top stuffing. I'm going to make that with the dinner tomorrow. Um, I am taking some more a few shortcuts on the dinner tomorrow. Obviously this is not going to be quite as elaborate as my regular Thanksgiving dinner. Um, so I am doing the stove top turkey dressing instead of making that from scratch. Um, and I will be bringing you along for that as well. And then I got 
two bags of chopped spinach. I'm gonna be using that for the pasta that I'll be making with the butternut squash. And then I did get at least another frozen ba bag of broccoli florets. I'm hoping that between that and the crown, uh, single broccoli crown that I got, I'm hoping that'll be enough for my soup, but I'll have to see when I go to make that. I might have to pick up another bag. And then I did get the restaurant style tortilla chips um, because I love having those on hand to have with salsa. I got the big box of the uh, multi, you know, bags of chips for the kids' lunches. And then I did get kettle cooked original chips. I love anything kettle cooked. Those are my absolute favorite. Of course, my daughter had to have Takis, so I did get those for her. And then let me come back around here so you can see. I did get another thing of tape. I didn't realize I had this because I also got tape from all these, but that's fine. As well as some gift tag um, for the gifts when I start wrapping. And then I got this uh, spicy chicken patties for my daughter. I know she likes to have those occasionally. And that is everything for the Walmart haul. Just as a quick aside here, I do have these cute little advent calendars. Our elves arrived yesterday uh, with the advent calendar. So my son, my youngest son got the baby shark and my daughter got this one. It has really cute little jewelry things she's been pulling out. Some really cute earrings, a necklace. There's her pretty little necklace she got today. And then, and then I did also get all of the kids uh, gingerbread house kit. We're gonna put those together tomorrow. And my oldest son, I did get a cheese advent calendar for. So I am going to get all of this put away. And then I think I am going to make up a batch of chili for dinner tonight. So let me get this put away and we will get started on that. Okay, and this is for the small little portion of Aldi's grocery haul that I did today. So we'll start over here. I did get another bag of the holiday bows because I think I'm getting low. Pretty sure I'm out of tape. If I have any, I'm not sure where it's at. So I picked that up. These are adorable. I got one for each of my two youngest children, the Santa letter writing kits. They have the activity book, sheets of letterhead, postcards, sticker sheets, colored pencils, door hangers, direction signs. I thought that was so cute. So another little fun activities for the children to work on. I needed more wrapping paper, so I got this three pack, which I thought was a really good deal. And then I got this sweet little uh, advent calendar for our dog. We have a little Yorkshire Terrier. I've shown him before. Hi, Quincy. So I wanted to get him his own little advent calendar. I'll go ahead and give him the first two little treats for today since I'm a couple days behind and then I needed to get some holiday gift boxes. I got just this little thing of cinnamon rolls. I thought we might have those made for breakfast. These are my absolute favorite. I don't know about you guys, but I'm obsessed. Every Christmas when these come out and this box is empty, I didn't eat all these. I did eat a couple. But then I started putting these away in the pantry and realized I hadn't filmed this haul yet. So I did get two of those. And this stuff I'm really excited about. So I found, turn these around so you can see what these are. These are turkey loins. So this is a rotisserie flavor and this is a cracked pepper. I've never seen turkey loins before. Usually it's just like the pork loins. So I'm very excited to have these. I actually picked one of these up for my mom and one for myself. And then super excited to see they have ground lamb. Um, it's the never any antibiotics, added hormones, vegetarian fed. So, so excited to see this. I've not seen this before at Aldi's and I am wanting to make some shepherd's pie, authentic shepherd's pie. So that's what that will be used for. And I will take you along when I make that. So a uh, short and sweet little haul from Aldi's. Okay, so I'm going to get this chili started. Ground beef. Actually, I don't know why. I meant to actually make this in my cast iron enamel skillet. I don't know why I put it in here. wasn't thinking. Oh well. 
my Dutch oven. That's usually what I always make it in. Let me get this beef browning. Okay, let me let that brown up some. Try not to move that around too much for the present. And then I'm going to come back and add in my onion. Alright, I just turned this down because I don't want to burn it. But I do want that brown, nice browning. Let me get my onion in here. Okay, so we're going to deglaze the pan here with some of the onions. I'm sorry, I don't have my tripod out here. I will. Actually, I had to order a new one. The last one I had broke, so I will be getting a new tripod so I can set my camera up and not have to hold it like this, but these onions have moisture in them, and that's actually going to help deglaze the bottom of this pan and help to get up all the yummy brown bits. I mean, my meat's not cooked through all the way. That's fine, but I'm going to let these onions help get up those brown pieces, keep my meat from burning, and then we will come back and add our next bit of ingredients. Okay, so we successfully deglazed our pan here. Now I'm going to season, a lot of times I will use the chili seasoning packets you can get because they're convenient and I like them, but I could not find one. So. I'm going to use uh, season how my mother seasons hers. I'm going to put in some ground cumin. And I'm just eyeballing this. I'm not even really sure of how much I should be putting in, but maybe just what looks good to me. I will um, put this recipe down below. Oh, sorry. This was chili powder that I just added in. I'll put this recipe down below, though, and try to have the exact amount, or at least the amounts that my mom would do. Um, I have Mexican oregano, so I'm going to use some of that, and then some garlic powder, smells good, looks good, I can always uh, readjust the seasonings later and add more if I feel like I need more of something. We're going to start with that, and then I thought I had, I thought I had a can, or more than one can, actually, of diced tomatoes. That's usually always something that I keep on hand, and somehow I have no diced tomatoes in my house. So, I had a tomato in my refrigerator that needed to be used up. Oh, there goes my lid. So, this is going in for our diced tomato. that I am going to add in some chili beans. This is a mild sauce chili bean. As well as two of the hot chili bean sauce. You can see I've got different brands here. I don't care. I just use whatever chili beans I see that are on sale. I like lots of beans in my chili. And I like it hot. So, two of the hot, one of the mild. I like, ooh, I like all that pretty color in there. Already looks so good. And lastly, I am going to add in tomato juice. Now, sometimes you can use tomato, I mean, you can use tomato sauce, um, or combination of sauce and juice. Sometimes I do that, actually. Hmm, do I want to add in some sauce? Or not. Let me add some more juice. I like mine kind of runny because I like to put like chips, crumbled up chips or crackers or something to thicken it up that way or even cornbread sometimes. I think I may add in one little can of tomato sauce as well. 
So one little can of tomato sauce, just to thicken it a little bit more. And now I am going to taste this and see if I need to adjust any seasonings. Should probably actually wait until this heats up more. I'll probably taste it again after it's heated through better. Let me see. No, oh, yeah, that definitely needs more seasonings. I think a little more of everything. I'm tasting just a lot of tomato and not much else. So I'm gonna add more seasoning. We're just gonna dump in. I, from what I remember, I like a good amount of chili powder in mine. More cumin, more garlic, more Mexican oregano. Let's give this a good stir. I'm gonna let this heat up more and then I'm going to taste it again and see, and you know, I may have to add in some sugar if I'm still getting that overwhelming tomato-y, acid-y flavor, but let's see. I wanna heat this through and then we'll give it another taste test. Okay, clean spoon, we're gonna give this another taste. This time with the bean and meat. Mm. That is good. That is good. I think I'm gonna add just a tad more chili powder and just a little bit of sugar. And I think it'll be perfect. A little bit more chili powder. We're gonna add about, I don't know, maybe a tablespoon of sugar. I think that'll just give it a perfect balance. I'm actually gonna taste this one more time. See what we think. Mmm. Guys, that's so good. That is delicious. Oh man. So we are just gonna let this simmer. I'm gonna let this simmer for like a half an hour or so on low. Let all these flavors meld together and then we will put it in our bowl. Plate it up. We have let this simmer for a good 30 minutes, and I believe we are done. Of course, you know, the longer you let this go, probably the better. Or not probably, I mean the better. You know how chili is always usually better the next day after those flavors have really sat together. But I am hungry, 7.30, and I'm gonna dish this up and we will give it a taste. Okay, so I've got some shredded cheddar cheese, sour cream, and I have tortilla chips. Now, ideally, I would have had that Cholula hot sauce is my favorite, and I'm out. I didn't realize that, or I would have bought more, as well as some fresh avocado on top of this because it's delicious. But let me get the sour cream and cheese kind of mixed up in here. Give it, a, see if I can give this a taste without burning my mouth. Mm. That is so good. So good. Nothing like a comforting bowl of chili on a cold night. Turned out delicious. Um, I was gonna try to do some prep tonight for tomorrow's little Thanksgiving dinner, but I'm tired. It's getting close to eight o'clock. I'm gonna eat. I have to go pick up my son in a little bit and I think I'm gonna call it a night and I'll pick back up with you tomorrow when I start prepping for the Thanksgiving meal. Good morning, my friends. It is Saturday morning. I left off with you guys yesterday. I had finished up the chili. It was delicious. I was gonna do some more prep work and I ran out of steam last night. So this morning I am going to get started actually making some breakfast for the children and I need to clean up a few dishes here first, actually, because I hate starting to cook and my kitchen is still a mess. So I'm gonna clean a little bit of this up, get breakfast going for them, and then we are gonna get started on putting together our Thanksgiving meal for today. coffee. Now I can get started on my day. So 
Um, I think it's going to be, I don't know, in the 50s to today, so it's not going to get terribly cold. Um, so it'll be decent weather, but like I said, I'm going to get started. I've got a pile of dishes here. I'll show you. Pile of dishes. You can see I've also got my turkey down in there because um, I'm going to get that going here in a little bit. But let me get these dishes cleaned up first, and then we're going to start making breakfast. Okay, so I've got the dishes done up here. Kitchen is decent, so I can comfortably get going on some breakfast. And I thought I would take a quick moment to show you what our elves are up to. They were busy hiding and the kids finally found Winky, the most mischievous elf hiding in our poinsettia. Okay, dinner is ready. We've got our eggs, our turkey bacon, regular bacon, sausage, links, and sourdough bread, regular bread. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. And yes, we do have peanut butter and jelly because my youngest son, Bro. that's what he lives on. So we're going to eat breakfast and then get going with the rest of our day. Well, it is quite a bit later. It is about a little after 12 o'clock in the afternoon. I had to go run an errand with the kids and then I came back and cleaned up the kitchen. So now we are going to finally get started on the Thanksgiving dinner for today. So I actually have a pot of water on the stove coming up to a, Princey, a pot of water on the stove coming up to a boil for the baked mac and cheese. Okay, so let me give you a rundown first of the menu for today. So I am doing a whole turkey here. It's about, I think it's like 12 pounds, so it's not a huge turkey. Um, we are having a, a dressing, but it's just turkey flavored stove top. I'm not um, going to do that from scratch right now. I've already actually had two Thanksgiving meals. I've done a Friendsgiving and a regular Thanksgiving with family. So this one I am going to take a few shortcuts on. So turkey and stuffing. I am doing homemade mashed potatoes. Um, we'll have gravy. I am doing a smaller portion of baked mac and cheese and then just regular green beans. And I think that's probably going to be it, but I asked my son what, you know, some of his usual favorites were, and that incorporates all of the things that he really loves. So that's what we're gonna be working on today. I've got the pot coming up to a boil on the stove for the baked mac and cheese to get the macaroni uh, boiling. And while that's working, I'm getting ready to make up a compound butter, and we're gonna get that on the turkey. So let's get going on that next. Okay, so two things that I always do that for me, makes a very successful turkey is I make up a compound butter that I put underneath the skin of the turkey and I'll show you that here in a minute and I use a turkey bag when I bake my turkey it just turns out so moist delicious perfectly cooked every time so I'm gonna start out just by adding I don't really use measurements just what looks kind of good by sight so that was paprika I'm gonna add in some parsley Sage, of course, this is for Thanksgiving, so we got to have sage. Decent amount of that. Garlic powder. Thyme. And then I'm going to do some salt and pepper, and I will also salt and pepper the turkey itself as well. this a good mix. I let this butter sit out all night. A stick of butter, it was just a, like another little small portion of butter I had left. I let that sit out all night, all night so it's nice and soft. Easy to mix all of this together. Okay, the water's boiling for the pasta, so I'm gonna add in a little olive oil so it doesn't stick. And I have shells pasta shells. I usually make this recipe with elbow macaroni, but I don't have any elbow macaroni, so this is what we're going to use today. And I want to have this recipe. 
so I'm not going to dump that whole thing of shells in there. I think this will be hopefully plenty to, hopefully that's plenty, because I think that's probably 16 ounces that I had in the container, which is what my recipe calls for. So this should just be about eight ounces in here. So we'll let this get going, try to just get this to al dente. Okay, so I've got the turkey here. I always make sure when you're dealing with a turkey, take the neck out, the giblet bag, all of that stuff. I cleaned up around here where there was like extra fat. I just cut that off. So before I start putting my compound butter in under the skin, I'm going to take some salt and pepper and kind of salt and pepper all around before I get my hands dirty again. Pepper. Now I like to put an onion inside the cavity and if I had any lemons I would put a lemon in here too but I'm out of lemons. I've even put oranges in there before. I do have an orange sitting here but I think I'll just do the onion today and then I have some fresh thyme here. I'm just going to put that up in there as well because that has kind of lends a little bit of a lemony flavor. Now for the butter what i'm going to do is try to carefully get my hands under the skin trying to open this up because i want to put my compound butter my herb butter right under the skin on top of that meat if butter under the skin everywhere than any remaining butter i'll just kind of smear on top they're going to help crisp up the skin more is putting this right on the top and it's kind of hard actually if I would have been thinking I would have pat dry my turkey first especially if you're going to do this herb butter on top like this it's really better to pat it dry first so now I'm going to wash off my hands and we're going to get this in our turkey bag okay so our turkey is ready to go in the bag these are the turkey bags I always uh, use these every year you can get them all of most grocery stores carry these they have the instructions in there on what temperature, how to use them. So I've got my bag open here. I had to put a tablespoon of flour in here. And now we are going to attempt to get this turkey in the bag and not make a huge mess. Okay, so that was relatively painless. I got some up here in my arm I need to wash off. Ideally, you have two people, one holding the bag and the other can help you put the turkey in there. Oh, I was gonna put paprika on top of the turkey. Well. I'm not going to do that now. I'm not going to take it back out to do that. Normally I like to put paprika on top of my turkeys or even a whole chicken. I just like the color that it lends as, after it cooks and the flavor, but it'll be fine. So these bags come with these little ties. I'm going to tie this up and then I have to cut six half inch slits um, into this so it can steam properly and I'm going to get it in the oven. I've got my oven preheating, it's supposed to be 350 degrees and for my size bird, uh, about two and a half hours. Okay, pay no attention to my filthy oven here. Oh, I've got to move the oven rack down. We do that. So we've got room for our turkey. Perfect. We are going to let that go for two and a half hours. Okay, so the pasta is done to about al dente. I've got a couple of little small baking dishes here. I'm not sure if I need both of these or one of these will do for this recipe, but we'll see. So I'm gonna get the bechamel sauce going for the mac and cheese. We are gonna start with three tablespoons of butter. the butter we're going to add some flour the original recipe says a third of a cup but I'm doing half of that since I'm having this recipe and we're gonna let that flour cook for about a minute or so just to kind of get that raw flour flavor cooked out and then we're gonna start adding some heavy cream and milk Okay, and then to our 
flour butter mixture, we're gonna start whisking in. This is a combination of whole milk and heavy cream. And since I'm having this recipe, this is about two cups. And we're gonna stir this, keep stirring it until we can tell this starts to thicken up. Now this is starting to thicken up. You can see some little bubbles are forming. Beautiful. So we're gonna add in some salt and pepper. That's all this recipe says to add in right now, but I also add in some garlic powder, smoked paprika. You want your mac and cheese to be kicked up a notch in flavor, add in smoked paprika. I'm telling you, makes all the difference. I'm gonna start out with that. And once we start getting all of this incorporated and mixed together, we're gonna do a taste test and see if we need to add any additional seasoning. Add in our cheese, I'm gonna turn this down. I've got two cups of shredded sharp cheddar cheese. I did hand shred this. I got the blocks when you're making your own homemade mac and cheese. It's really better if you can uh, shred it yourself. Don't get the pre-shredded kind because that usually has some kind of waxy coated coating on there to help that cheese from keep the cheese from clumping and it doesn't melt very well for when you're trying to do something like this to make mac and cheese. And the other cheese, I believe this recipe calls for Gruyere and I found the Swiss and Gruyere mix. I think I got these from Aldi's. I'm not sure. I'll have to look. And I have a little bit left here, so I'm just gonna put the rest of what I have left in these. Get that melted in there. Actually, I think I was supposed to save some of that back. <laughs> I think I was supposed to save some of that back and add it in the middle of the whole mac and cheese mixture itself, but Oh well, it's okay. So now I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna spray both of these. I don't know which one I'm gonna end up using. Now, what I'm gonna do actually, I'm gonna take my pasta and just put it right in this sauce, bechamel cheese mixture, and then pour that into there because it's gonna be too hard to stir up in that little casserole dish. So let's just do this. Perfect and get that all totally coated in that delicious cheese mixture. And now is gonna be a great time to, to do another taste test and see if we need to readjust our seasonings again. It looks so good. Do a test here. Get a shell, get that nice and coated. Mm. That's good. I'm going to add just a little bit more salt. A little bit more garlic powder. And a little bit more paprika. And I think that'll be just perfect. Really, really good. Highly recommend this recipe and I will link it down below. If you want to try it, it's such a good baked mac and cheese. So now we're going to get this back into our casserole dish. Try not to make a mess. Really gooey deliciousness. Okay, and now we're going to make a lovely little panko breadcrumb topping for this. Okay, to our bowl, we're going to add our panko breadcrumbs, melted butter, our parmesan 
on cheese. And this is where the recipe tells you to add in some smoked paprika, but as you can see, I already did some of that in the mac and cheese itself, and now I'll do it again. And this is just gonna be all mixed up together. Let that butter kind of bind all of this and it's gonna go on top of our creamy mac and cheese and give a lovely little crust, little crunch. So now we just wanna put this on top. Try to get it on there as evenly as possible. baked mac and cheese is ready to go. So I'm just gonna cover this with some foil and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna set it aside for now, cover it in foil and it'll be ready for me. I think it's like 350 degrees for 30 minutes. So I'm gonna clean up some of the mess that I made from putting this together and we're gonna move on to doing our potatoes for our mashed potatoes. Okay, so I am glad to be sitting down now. <laughs> taking a little bit of a rest while I peel up these potatoes. I'm gonna get these peeled and cut up and into the pot for the mashed potatoes. So to recap, we have our turkey in the oven baking um, with our herb butter mixture over that. Uh, we just finished up our baked mac and cheese together. It's gonna to be so delicious. I've just got that sitting, waiting and ready for us. Um, and now I'm gonna start on the potatoes and then what do we have left? green beans and stuffing, which we're gonna take some help from the store on those. So moving right along, everything's coming together nicely. I've got all the potatoes peeled up here. Um, I have been having pretty much everything on all the recipes, not making near as much except for <laughs> the potatoes because they're the bomb diggity. I love these. So I did make probably about the normal batch of potatoes that I would normally make. I'm gonna chop these up and get these boiling, um, put these together, and then most of our components are ready uh, for our meal. So um, we'll just take a short little break after this while the turkey's still cooking and the potatoes, when the potatoes are done, I'll get to sit down and rest for a little bit. Actually, I think I'm gonna wrap some presents and then uh, we'll come back and get the rest of this meal together. Okay, I think our potatoes are done. I've been letting them steam over here for a while now, trying to get all the excess moisture out so we don't have watery mashed potatoes. And I am going to use my meat masher to mash these because I cannot find my potato masher. So, but this works out fine. Now to our potatoes, we're gonna add a stick of butter. This, by the way, is Pioneer Woman's mashed potato recipe. It is the best recipe that I've ever had. If you've never tried her mashed potato recipe, I highly recommend. Actually, I think I'll keep mashing that in for now. Kind of break that butter up in there. To this, we are also going to add one whole block of cream cheese. Oh my goodness. Does that make these potatoes phenomenal? Uh, of course, salt and pepper. Now, her other little secret ingredient that makes these extra special is seasoned salt instead of just regular salt. So I'm gonna sprinkle some seasoned salt. I probably do a little bit more than what her recipe calls for, but it's so good. It just adds the perfect flavor. So we are going to give these a taste test. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Oh my goodness. So, so delicious. Maybe just a little bit more salt. I guess I'll just put in a little more regular salt. And that should be perfect. 
so so good so now our mashed potatoes are done those are waiting for us the only other thing we need to do is bake our mac and cheese and throw together our stove top and our green beans um, we'll do that when the turkey comes out of the oven and i think the turkey only has about 30 minutes left so we're doing great on time uh, we'll check that when it comes out to make sure it's done i'm going to clean up um, my mess from the potatoes kind of tidy up a little bit more in the kitchen and then I think I'm going to take some time and wrap some gifts while I have a little downtime and then we'll come back and finish this up. Oh yes. It looks beautiful. It smells delicious. We're going to test this. I'm going to put my meat thermometer in and see where we're at. I'll try to do this without burning myself. Try to put this in a thicker part of the meat. We want it at least 165 degrees, and oh yes, that looks like it's definitely, definitely done. Perfect. So I am just gonna let this sit and rest in the bag for about 20 minutes, or not 20 minutes, I'm gonna let it rest for a while, at least for as long as it takes to get all the other sides done. And um, when we're ready to serve, then we'll, I'll get it carved up. But it is done, it smells delicious, it looks beautiful. I'll show it to you once I do take it out of the bag. So, I turkey's done, mashed potatoes are done. I'm gonna get our mac and cheese in the oven that just needs to bake for 30 minutes and whip up the stove top and the green beans and I think we are about to pull this together. And here is our beautiful turkey. It came out so moist and delicious, uh, beautiful crispy skin, and the meat was just perfectly cooked and tender. This is the shot of the entire table. So you can see we've got our gorgeous turkey as the centerpiece that turned out so lovely and delicious. Um, I do have, I had a little bit of cranberry sauce left over from Thanksgiving, so I just set that out. This is the turkey flavored stovetop stuffing. Just kept that easy as well as the green beans, nothing special there. And then our beautiful baked macaroni and cheese. This turned out so delicious, as well as the mashed potatoes that we made together. You guys, this meal was absolutely fabulous. That's a little jar of gravy there. My son absolutely loved it. My daughter loved it. And it really was quite the success. So here is a shot of just my plate before digging in. And no, I could not quite finish all of that. I did have to come back later for seconds, but truly an enjoyable, delicious meal. Thank you guys so much for coming along with me this weekend as we did all of our little fun activities. Um, not only did we cook a bunch of good food together, I was actually able to do some gingerbread house kits with my children, which was such a fun time. And I just really appreciate if you took the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed everything that you saw. Um, if you did, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Uh, share my videos if you know there are others who would enjoy this content and please consider subscribing if you haven't done so already and I really look forward to seeing you guys soon in the next video. Goodbye.